two babies. Okay, 10 seconds. <laughs> because I gotta put them back, but there's two. Hey, yeah, that, she was under here like this this morning. She, I don't think she's gotten up. Are you wanting to be a mama too? Are you feeling some Broodyville competition? So good morning. We're going to candle little Miss Silky Mama's eggs. She's on five eggs. She was originally on six. We're on five and we are entering day 17. So if you are familiar with broody hens or incubating chicken eggs, they go to day 21, but you really want them to lock down or they automatically lock down on around day 18. So she's about to go into lockdown tomorrow. So I wanted to go ahead and candle today, let her get settled in. Oh, and by the way, good morning. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. <laughs> He did good, y'all. Go Big Orange. <laughs> he did good. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of background, so I have this video right now that I'm making, and I'm doing it in a couple of stages because I want to candle her eggs. And you have, really, in my house, the best time to do that right now is after dark before the sun comes up because you want it as dark as possible when you candle. And I actually use a little candler I am missing one little end piece, which would be convenient, but I've lost it in the move. It'll show up like in 20 years, I'm sure. So we're gonna candle and see how we're doing because that allows you as you are going through the incubation process, what that does is it allows you to make decisions on you know, what eggs you should keep in there or what eggs you should pull. You don't wanna have uh, you know, babies that haven't made it or eggs that aren't viable um, you know, remaining in there because what if it breaks? What if it explodes? You want to get those out so the other eggs that are viable have a better chance of making it. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're looking for. At this stage, I will tell you right now, it may be difficult to see much of anything uh, in a few of the eggs because they're dark. That's a good thing. Now, sometimes the dark, dark eggs got to a certain point, like maybe right now, and then they don't make it to hatch day, which is day, around day 21, give or take. So long story short, we're gonna candle and see what she does. I have a silky in the kitchen, and I'm gonna talk about different broodies, uh, different experiences with my broody hens. This is my favorite situation so far, is to be able to have a hen come right in the home, settle into a big 50 gallon, 30 to 50 gallon tote, be really chill the whole 21 days and have babies. And then you can just, you know, take them and do with them at, at, the, at that point. You'll have to acclimate them later. So, but this is what I find is best. Um, some birds just don't do that great out with other birds when they're trying to be mama. I don't blame them. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, the sun, <laughs> the sun is coming up, but it's dark enough. And I just, uh, I just put baby Rip outside. His bottle is in hot water heating up. So if you hear a baby goat, well, you're hearing a baby go. <laughs> hey, Mom. How you doing? Food and water looks good. So this is a Silky, and I brought her in because she continued to, after several days, she remained broody, okay? So um, I didn't want other hens knocking her off of her eggs or giving her a hard time. That can happen. Depends on how defensive the broody is. Some just don't get bothered at all, but some do. They get kind of bullied. There's a lot of competition out in my coops right now over broody hens. Some are committed, some aren't, and I'll talk about that, but they still compete. Now, what she just did, and this is going to gross you out, so you have a warning, and there's my dogs barking. She just had a broody poop. Okay, let's not do that. Let's see, she didn't like it. She just pooped. So about two to three times a day, I'm having to come in and I just clean up her broody poop. If you've never had experiences with broody poops, it's worse than a breastfed newborn baby diaper, okay? So there, if you've never experienced that, you have no idea what you're in for, but I quickly clean it up 
and uh, and then put fresh pine shavings in. But this, other than doing that, I haven't had to change any of this. She, It's very clean in here, but I do have to assist her two or three times a day usually. And uh, it's not a big deal, you know, guys, toughen up. Girlfriend, girl, <laughs> let's get this. Now I'm just gonna simply take the eggs out from under her and hold them up too. We may see a little bit of nothing. We may see a whole lot of something. You never know. Plus, like I said, we're on day, around day 17. So that babies have grown and she's gonna peck at me. She didn't peck at that one. Oh, oh God, wait, twice actually. Okay, so here we go. You ready? We're gonna do our best. Okay, so she keeps pecking at me. She doesn't like this. She's not a gr an aggressive little bird. Okay, so I have done the first brown one, the green, which is showing darker. Look here, she wants her babies back, y'all. Did you see that? <sighs> Let me see it just for a second, Mommy. Look at that. All right, let's turn it the right way, just real quick. You can see it's dark. You've got the uh, egg sac there. I don't see a blood ring, which is usually, you'll see it around or anything oozing and gooing. Here, baby, there's your there's your baby. Okay, just keep pecking at me. <laughs> you don't want them pecking at you a whole lot because they can peck the eggs by accident. And I've had one actually peck a hole. Now, here's a good one. Now, this baby right here, you can still see a little bit of the veining. It looks pretty good. Oh, yeah, she's tucking. Um, you can see, oh, yeah, we're doing good here. Now, like I said, you're at the very end. So it's gonna be hard to see some of these, but this one is great. Oh, th that one's even moving, look here. Is this one the one that's marked with the X? Yes, so this one is um, half turkin. Okay, take your baby, okay, she's pulling them back. All right, so, so far, four out of the five look good to this moment, y'all. I know this is not the most exciting thing you've ever seen in your life, but this is what you're gonna see. <laughs> I mean, this is real life. <laughs> okay, here's the last tan egg. It's moving, doing great. All right, let's see if she takes it. Let's just put it. Take it, Mama. Take your baby back. Okay, so here we are, day 20. I already have a baby. She's pecking the fire out of me, so I can't really get a good look. I don't want to disrupt too much of what's going on. This morning, n no babies were hatching. Now we have action, and you can see right here that that's that X I put on the eggs that I talked about. This has got to be a turkin mixed baby. If it picked up those genetics, I don't know yet, but that's what this is. You ready to come in, old girl? Come on, come on, girl. So, hey guys, welcome back into the video. We started this video and we were candling eggs. We were candling them on day 16. So we went into lockdown. We're now actually on day 20. We have babies. So I'm kind of glad we waited to continue this video because now we have hatching going on. I'm gonna try to show you what I can. So far, what I've seen is one baby. I really don't wanna disturb her because if the other four are obviously in lockdown because lockdown period for chicken eggs is day 18. We talked about that previously. So I don't really wanna disturb anything, but she has had one little baby. She's doing so, so good. So let's talk about this, okay? Hey, everybody's asking about you. And you need a bottle, your dinner bottle, but it's too early. Yeah, I know, you want it, but you gotta wait 30 minutes. Let's put you outside in the sunshine, okay? Everybody wants to see these new babies too. Not just you, baby. Okay, so this is what I do if I can for any and all broody hens when we have broodies. It just depends on the scenario. Now I have silkies. Now let me tell you right now, any hen can go broody. Some people will tell you that there are breeds that will never, ever, ever go broody. And I have had those breeds, several different ones like Easter Eggers or Whiting True Blues, different ones, and they went broody. They were committed and they were wonderful mamas. Overall though, the best, most consistent ones I've had, I have to tell you, Silkies, that's why I have Silkies, and Buff Orpington. Okay, so mama here is on day 20 and she is on one baby that I know of. 
I'll add that clip. I just got it. It is a turkin, y'all. It is actually the daddy is, so I, I marked that egg. But she is on four other little eggs, and I haven't checked them in several hours. I'm trying to leave her alone as much as possible. So I cleaned up a broody poop. What you see that down there right below her is actually her little feet, her toes. She really sprawled her feet out in the last two days. Like she really hunkered down when she went into lockdown. She really hunkered down on the eggs, and she did not want to be bothered. Um, there's her food, clearly for her to eat, and I just took the water dish out. I put just a little simple water dish for her in there because it was easy for her to drink out of, but now I'm gonna switch to a water base with, um, I'm gonna put some little rocks in it because you don't want the babies to drown. So right now, all I've been doing is keeping an eye on her, checking her several times a day, fresh food and water, cleaning her up, leaving her alone. This girl is doing this all on her own. Do not buy expensive furniture or mats or towels or anything if you think it's gonna to touch your farm life <laughs> because they're gonna do what they're gonna do. Thanks, Rip, appreciate it. Okay, so this right here, I typically keep, I think this is actually a 30 gallon tote, a little bit smaller. And if you hear that noise behind guys, I ran my dish, I'm running my dishwasher, gotta have clean dishes. So, you know, I, uh, I usually have these um, 50 gallon totes. And if we have all five babies hatch and she does really, really well, we'll probably have to transition them to a larger tote. But right now, all we're trying to do is get her through the broody process and the hatching process, which we are clearly in right now. The good thing about silkies is they are the, they're the best of the best of broody, okay? And when they hunker down and they get committed, they will hatch literally anything. We have hatched uh, ducks and, and had silkies raise ducks and everything. It's really wonderful. But I brought her in because she was the only one that was really sticking it out several weeks ago in terms of remaining broody. And so I took a chance, and this is what I do. I wait till it gets dark. As you know, we brought her in. I had the tub set up. On top is simply, let me pull it away. Um, you've seen this before. I just use those little, uh, like, um, childproof, what are these called? These guards, uh, the gates. Childproof, you know, child gates. You can get them at Walmart, usually for like 10 bucks, and I have several of them. Now, I do keep a towel kind of on top just to keep the light down to give her some privacy, but she, you know what? She really hasn't cared that much. So we're letting her have her space, letting her do her thing, and really it depends upon the broody. You cannot predict which ones are gonna do great and which don't, because I've brought a couple in, and I thought they were really committed after a couple of days, and they flip out once you get them inside. You take them back out, they're not broody anymore. You take them back out, they go broody again. So it's kind of a toss up. But when I can do this right here, it's more controlled, it's just easier on her, and we can monitor everything that's going on, but it all depends on your situation. Okay, I'm gonna see, now see, ooh, she may not let me get under here, y'all because I tried earlier and she was pecking the fire out of me. See, she's our, <laughs> see. Um, so we've still got some, oh, there's baby. There's baby, there's baby, where's baby? Oh, you did so, is this another baby? Wait a minute, I think this is another baby. Hang on, okay, ow, I wanna get the egg. So we had both of the brown eggs. We have another one and the two green. So I'm gonna take this out and we're gonna set up the water. By the way, this is a high protein chick feed. I'm already giving it to her. Uh, the chick starter grower for game bird, uh, quail, turkey. I'm just, it's a higher protein, it's what I keep. Look at there. So I, I'm just gonna keep this in here for now. They won't start nibbling until probably tomorrow. So I may just have to pour it out on a dish. But we're gonna, let's, let's get the water and let's leave her alone. Okay, so here's the thing. Sometimes when the weather is really, really good and you have a really good setup in your coop, you can leave broody hens out there. If I've got a couple of broodies or one or two, I may section off something out in my coop and put them over into what I call like their own little apartment. I call it Broodyville. So it's like their own little condo. And you know, if you try to keep anything from getting in there 
because you don't want them to disrupt and lay more eggs in with the clutch that she is trying to, you know, hatch out of. It just keeps everything simple. The main thing is you kind of want to separate your broodies, not just because you have to pull new eggs every day, okay? But also because eggs get broken and that almost starts, depending on how bad or messy the situation is, it starts it over and over. So this is why this is more work for me, but in the end, it's better if it works and she sticks with Broodyville in this environment, then this overall has the highest success rate of all. So see how this works out? So they can come up, mama can drink, plenty of water, um, and they're not gonna be too dipped into the water. Also, because we're inside, and luckily we're pretty warm also, we've really come out of a cold snap. We're gonna be 60 degrees tomorrow. They're most likely not going to chill. Plus, with having them in the house, you can watch what they're doing. Hey, Mom. Would I have to kinda... Are you thirsty, Mommy? You're so busy. I see your baby, dear Mama. It's a little bit slanted. Let's just put it right there. So she can actually, I've watched her the past couple of days. She can actually lean over and sip and eat, but she does not, believe me when I tell you, she does not get up off of those babies. So happy Valentine's Day. What did I get for Valentine's Day besides some beautiful kisses and roses? That's right. I put off getting this uh, last year. I just sort of waited because I do have all of my little brooders and all my incubators all work, but I did want to get something, you know, something I've really been wanting. So don't buy me Godiva, darling. Go diva. Give me chicky babies. So I'm going to have to figure out how to run this thing. Probably a bunch of you have it. So any input, please give it, drop it off down below. I'll let you know. It's got really great, um, you know, high marks and stars and everybody that I know that has had it really, really likes it. So I thought it was time to try something new and uh, we may have to get wild with some more turkey eggs because clearly we have some live action with that. Hey, Betty. Oh, now look. Now, wait a minute. The, look. Did you, did you drop that like it's hot? Looky there, there's a perspective. That's hers. Maybe she's not broody. She's just liking the, <laughs> she likes the spot. Hey, are you interested? Are you thinking about it? She lays the biggest eggs. Looky there. Hmm, you've done this before. Let's see how this works out. All right. So that's the update. I tucked my candy. <laughs> It'd be rude if I was just knocking it around like a tooth and talking to you. So <laughs> um, we'll keep you posted on the babies hatching. Having broody hens and broody mamas is a big conversation. So feel free to ask questions below or make comments below. Somebody will get to you if I can't. I'll do my best and uh, we'll keep you up to date on that. And yes, chocolate cake is next. Let's go.